My question this week is, what are the best practices for shrinking files on SQL Server? What are the best practices for shrinking files on SQL Server? Now, this is one of those things that it depends on a lot of things. There's some people out there that'll say, no, never shrink files ever. Well, the fact is there are situations where you may be in a position where you have to shrink files on your SQL Server. But the thing you wanna do is only shrink files one at a time, or sorry, only shrink files as a one-time operation after some significant event. Like let's say you've got a database file that's grown large and you delete half the data out of there and you don't expect that to refill anytime soon. Well, that might be a good reason to shrink your data file. Now, if you shrink 10% of, or you, you clear up 10% of your file and you say, oh, I wanna shrink it, just get that 10% back, but your database is growing, well, you're probably gonna fill that up anyway, so it seems kind of wasteful to shrink that. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna target specific files. Now, database files and log files are very different. Although the commands are the same for shrinking them, there's different processes to use. A log file, the way it grows is if it's in use, it just grows and grows and grows. And you can only shrink things off the end of that file. With a data file, you may have to move things around in order to shrink the end of the file. So you wanna make sure that you're taking the right approach to doing those differently using DBCC shrink file and not DBCC shrink database. Now, if you do, like we had an example just a couple days ago where a client had several, like a couple dozen databases on their server. They did a, a migration that somehow uh, changed a lot of data and that caused their log files to all get bloated out to the point they were starting to run out of disk space in that server. Well, they didn't have an option to quickly add disk space to that server. So shrinking the log files was the right thing to do because they had grown for one specific event that's not likely to happen again. And I say that because I've given them some ideas on how to keep it from growing so big in the future. And they're freeing up space that's not needed for regular runtime by shrinking these extremely bloated log files. Now, if you do shrink your data files, which generally we're gonna push you not to do unless you've got a good reason, like they've really, I mean, a significant amount of space has been cleaned out of them. But you wanna make sure that if you shrink your data files, fragmentation can occur. And you wanna make sure that you fix that fragmentation by rebuilding or reorganizing indexes after it shrinks. And another thing to do to make it so you don't have to shrink files so often is to modify your growth settings. Adjust your auto growth settings on your database so that they grow at an appropriate rate. One of the things we have with database health monitor that was added in the last update or so was a way to go and look at your, your data and your log files and see what point in time they actually grew. And it's a really interesting thing to take a look at to see how those files look over time. If you are at the point where you do have to shrink a file, make sure you shrink it during a downtime or after hours. When there's low traffic, it's easier to shrink the files when there's less going on in them. And if you're gonna shrink them, sometimes it's better to shrink them in a loop where you only shrink a small amount at a time, shrink maybe 25 megabytes in a chunk rather than trying to sh shrink off a gigabyte at a time. Depending on the size or layout of the file with data files, that might be the way it has to be done. Also, consider alternatives. You don't necessarily have to shrink your files. You can address storage issues by expanding disk capacity or implementing different archive strategies so that those databases don't get so bloated over time. And test first. Always make sure you've got a way to test this in a non-production environment to make sure that it's not going to have a significant impact. And only shrink your files when necessary. Shrinking is not a routine maintenance task, but it's a last resort when something unusual has happened. Thanks for watching our video. I'm Steve and I hope you've enjoyed this. Please click the thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want more information, more videos like this, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified of future videos that we create.